Hey, what's going on, everyone? I'm excited to have you back here on the podcast, episode 108 with Kevin, Kevin Wilhelm. And he is the president and CEO of the Middlesex United Way. And uh, he's also has served on, on the board of directors for the Chamber of Commerce and is very involved with the community. Um, he's also been awarded on the, the N, N, double, wait, how do you pronounce it? NAACP. Double ACP. Um, and has spoken at graduations at, um, at the local college and yeah, has, has helped manage uh, a lot of volunteers, a lot of staff and has contributed a lot to the community. Um, but I'm really excited to, to have you on the, the podcast, Kevin. Me too, Davids. And this is, uh, this is my first podcast. This is exciting for me. Yeah. Let's, let's hope it's not your last because it's my first. <laughs> Let's hope it goes really well <laughs> and that we inform and entertain. That is the goal, correct? Yes, yes. Um, I, I think this will be fun. Um, you, you've been definitely like one of the most engaged authors in, uh, in our newest project, uh, Redefining Masculinity. And um, it, it's great just chatting with you and, and your energy. And, and you're also an Eagles fan. So yes. oh, yeah, to that. Should we just divert to that? <laughs> if all else that, fails, let's talk about the Eagles. <laughs> or maybe that will be 109. Or, or, or maybe, you know, 129 will be your we should. Oh, my God, that's a good idea. We should do something about we'll the Eagles. That. I feel like there's a lot to talk about. All right. And I do remember you promised to buy me tickets so when we go to the game this <laughs> I thought I heard that promise that's, from you. How about this? Me. If you get 1,000 views on this episode, <laughs> I'll buy your tickets. <laughs> Fine. Deal. <laughs> But um, if you get less than a thousand, you buy my tickets. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, that's funny. My word is my bond. <laughs> well, you know, th thanks for being on here. I'm really excited to, to chat with you. Um, I, I think the book, like, like you've been saying, like has been getting a lot of feedback, um, a lot more feedback than my first book for sure. With, with the great pause, I think because this topic is just so, a lot of, there's not a lot of people talking about what we're talking about right so I, I think it's just like a timely message and you know I know we were catching up earlier a, a bit about your 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 history and your love life and sort of like how you met your Whoa. wife um, <laughs> so I feel like there's there's a lot a lot to talk about what what would you say is like something that you've got out of um, being an author that you didn't expect yeah, you know, it's not something that has been a goal of mine. I've always enjoyed writing. And I think, uh, you know, I, I've actually um, had a column in our local paper in the Middletown Press for really more than a decade, kind of talking about work-related projects and whatnot. But but it's, um, and I've, again, I've always enjoyed writing, but I never never thought of necessarily publishing as something that, um, um, that I would really aspire to. But um, it's been an awesome experience and... Uh, can I tell you how I even got involved in the project? It's kind of an interesting story. Does, yeah, can we sure. go there? So mm -hmm. um, the publisher, you know, Greenheart Publishing, uh, Liz Hill was, um, I don't usually see her much on Facebook, but I did notice a post when she was asking for feedback about the cover for this, you know, oh, and the, and the topic, redefining yeah. masculinity, right? Yeah. And, so, and I, I saw the five cover options, which were well done, right? But mm -hmm. I had a very strong instant reaction to all of them. And, and to mm -hmm. me, they spoke of, in part, what's wrong with, with how mm -hmm. men are portrayed. Mm -hmm. And the cover options, men were either alone, mm -hmm. and then and none of them really did you see their face. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if we're trying to, you know, you and I will we'll, we'll discover, I think a theme in this book is strength and vulnerability, which means mm -hmm. that you have to be known and seen and heard, right? So, yeah. and, and be, be, uh, be able to connect with other people, other guys, right? So we're mm -hmm. not alone and we're not hiding, we're not hiding. So anyway, so I, yeah. I was going back and forth and she, she, she finally said, Lisa, this is great. Would you like to talk about contributing a chapter? And I said, yes, let's do it. Mm -hmm. So here I am. Huh. That's, that's so cool. And that's fortuitous, right? Like, and it really stuck to me that like how much you really care about the men in your life and your friends and your mm -hmm. relationships. Like it really stands out to me that, you know, how much you care about, you know, I know you mentioned, you know, um, that there are some relationships in your life and some unfortunate news and just the way that the care and the love that you have for your friends, like it's, it's very apparent. And 
I think many men wish to have someone that cares that much about them, right? I, I don't think it's common to have men really openly share like, hey, man, like, this is how much you mean to me, you know, but it seems like you do that um, regularly with with the men in your life. I do now. <laughs> you know, so you know, as part of my story, there, there were decades where that really wasn't the case. And so that's part of the reason why I just am so grateful and appreciate where I am now in life. You know, as we, as we you know, read through the story, it's, it's really clear that, um, uh, that I had always aspired to have that depth, Davidson, and to, to, to have those meaningful connections. But for lots of reasons, I, I, I my, my own responsibility, um, I didn't, I didn't really pursue them. And, and now I am really comfortable with that. And it is incredibly meaningful. And, uh, and, you know, part of it, I, I, if you don't mind, we talk about briefly mentorship, people, mm. people sort of ask and suggest, um, they use that phrase with me a lot. And, uh, and that's fine. That's not really, I don't ever really seek to do that. But, but to me, my perspective is very clear that um, through through getting to know people, getting to know other guys, and you know informally, and and then you know as as that develops, we're always learning from each other, and so that, so it's really a give and take at all times. Sometimes mm -hmm. there might be someone in such a desperate situation that they are that we are giving and they are completely taking because that's what they need, mm -hmm. but that's not the norm. So even if mm -hmm. even if it's whether it's age or 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 like a work-related thing, we're kind of feeding into each other. So mm. the mentorship to me is always mutual. So I, I just feel like mm. it's, um, um, it's, 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 it's always positive for both people. I don't like the whole mm. thing about, it's just the ratio of give and take that changes over mm. depending upon circumstance and situations or um, need of the person. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, so, I, I, I think it's interesting because it's it's funny, right? Because I think the more we give, the the more fulfilled and the happier we we are, right? It's it's like almost yes. the opposite of what you would think, right? It's like, oh, but if I'm giving all the time, wouldn't that make me have less? But it's actually giving is more in a way, right? It, it's like almost weird how like if you look at it mathematically, it doesn't make any sense. But if but like if you take a along like the the analysis, like analyzing it, it, anyone like in your shoes, who's given so much, like, you know, you, you can die, honestly, like a happy man. Cause you know, like, Hey, at the end of the day, I know that I've, um, have made a lot of impact in the world. Whereas like, you know, maybe people have a lot of money, but maybe they, they might, you know, or maybe they weren't there for their family or maybe they, you know, they've, haven't they stopped speaking to some of their friends like you know like maybe they they have a high net worth but maybe they mm. haven't felt as fulfilled right so it's interesting how that works yeah yeah i i actually it, it i actually um it this you know you know i'm a person of faith right that's part of part of my story mm. right so um this this it doesn't make any sense unless you are, are a person a person of faith but i truly believe that all the relationships that matter to me the most have have been strengthened, even in the past decade, where my my connections, my strong connections to other men, um, there are so many. So the more connections I have, the more time I believe I have for everyone. It's fascinating mm -hmm. because I am gaining, I'm getting a lot, and I actually feel like the focus and attention and who I am around my family mm. because I'm learning and growing and, and mm. I think, you know, the, and serving others um, and being served in return, but serving others, it's actually served me well with the people that I'm the closest to. So they've all mm. been strengthened. That is incredibly powerful to, to, to yeah. have that, to have a bunch of people that I connect with that I didn't used to and spend mm. a lot of time in, you know, investing in each other and that, that serves me really well at home and with other people that I'm close to. That's just awesome. And it's not in the book, yeah. but that's actually what happened to me. Hmm. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's beautiful, right? Because it's like you would think it's the opposite, right? You would think like, you oh. I totally think it's the opposite. But, it's like, but, oh, huh. but you referenced it kind of there's sort of joy and, you know, um, and you're when we are giving or serving, we are getting something in return, like heart related mm -hmm. and and so it is, it is positive. And I'm at a, a stage in life where I'm able to do that. Like it's, it, you know, time-wise and whatnot. I, I, mm. you know, when I, my kids were little, that that's not something that I would have been able to do. You know, my, my life yeah. was, was 
the, the, the circle of people I was involved with were really related to my kids, right? So now I have, a, as they're older, I have a chance to sort of form adult relationships with people. And my kids are, you know, not, uh, we're just not as hands-on. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's like, it's, it's interesting because um, I often hear like, as they become adults, it's a new dimension, right? Of like, it's, it's a different way of relating to them, right? It's more like a friendship, right? Instead of like, oh, they only come to me when they need something. Right, 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 <laughs> right, right. yes. Yeah. But I'm sure there's still times where they still there's come still... to you when they need something. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, but yeah, so um, I appreciate the stage of life I am, I, I'm in, and I appreciate, uh, you know, where I am uh, right now. And I definitely appreciate the people in my life. And, um, I, and I, yeah, so that's kind of, that it's, it, it's, it's, this is the perfect topic at the perfect time for me, this mm -hmm. redefining masculinity. And it really drew me in. I don't know that I would have um, necessarily responded um, so eagerly to uh, other topics, but this is, this is clearly calling to me. And I felt like I had a story to tell and I'm honored to share it. And the feedback has really been positive. And um, it's, it's, it's very affirming. Yeah. And, and would you be willing to share with us like a passage or, um, you know, a part that you would want to share with everyone? Um, cause, cause I, I do think it's one, it's such a cool feeling to be able to read, um, something, you know, on the Kindle. And then eventually when we get the physical book, I think it's just a beautiful feeling to, you know, and then your community and all your loved ones can also enjoy and celebrate you as well. Right. Um, but yeah, if, if you want to share a, a passage, we'd love to discuss with you what it meant to you um, afterwards. Do you mind if we start right at the beginning? Cause it kind of, it yeah. does set the stage. Is let's, that all right? Let's do it. So, yeah. So the, the, the title of, of, of my chapter is the heart. And it was very obvious that that's what it should be. And uh, <laughs> let me just start. And I think it'll, it'll start to reveal as I read why, why that uh, is, is so critical, why that title is so natural. Mm. So um, it's all about the heart, said my friend and spiritual mentor, Pete, yet again, as we were finishing up lunch, I nodded my head sil silently, thinking to myself, yeah, yeah, as I usually did when we wrapped up another of our many lengthy chats about life, faith marriage, fatherhood, and more. Pete knew that I live mostly in my head rather than from my heart. I was not very comfortable expressing my feelings or emotions. I think I feared that if I expressed feelings or emotions, that would only reinforce the negative self-image I already had of myself as weak. I surely didn't want to appear even weaker to others than I thought I was. My mind was my comfort zone. Although I had always been friendly and connected fairly easily, with most people, my connections were pretty much on a shallow level, most, most of the time. I often overthought conversations, like pretty much all the time, <laughs> and uh, or my actions, I was overthinking them. Sometimes I would even have entire conversations with people in my own head. Um, mm. My heart, though, always created deep relationships. I wanted to be like Pete, who seemed to effortlessly, effortlessly cultivate them just by being himself. I always enjoyed my time with Pete. He's a youth pastor who was introduced to me in 2010 when I was approaching my 50th birthday. A mutual friend suggested Pete could be engaged as an ally in the work of the nonprofit that I lead. The more I spent time with Pete, the more I wanted to spend time with him. He had joy, contentment, strong relationships, and deep faith. I wanted all of these, but was starting from scratch with none of these. Pete worked out. He built things with his hands. He loved the outdoors. He could be competitive and aggressive. He was a man's man. He loved people deeply as his faith taught him to do. He frequently emphasized his faith, but I kept kind of dismissing faith as the driver of his joy, contentment, and secure relationships. Pete was a hugger and shed tears when he became emotional. He talked openly about his struggles. He was strong and vulnerable. I'll never forget the time he started talking about his love for his wife. He had to continuously pause as he teared up the mere thought of who she was and how much joy she brought to him and his family made him start to gently weep and in public, no less. I was, was reminded of the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. Mm. Yes, that's, that's beautiful, right? Like, especially like what you said about um, his wife and how, 
you know, if we, if we actually truly don't take our wives for granted and our part, you know, partnership, it's, it's, it's like a beautiful, beautiful thing, like unconditional love. Right. It's, it's like how many, pe- like, even for me, like, I definitely think I take her for granted sometimes, you know, like I, 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 I am working <laughs> actively on not taking the people I'm closest to for granted. Yeah. Um, and, and to be more present, you know, uh, sometimes, uh, it's just easier the people that you're around the most, right? You, we do, do tend to take them for granted and are not as present as we are with, with other people. But mm-hmm. just see, it, I, I, I distinctly remember where we were, what he was talking about, and the number of times he paused because the tears were running down about wow. how devoted he was. And, and he was able to articulate just how amazing she was and how amazing she made him feel. Like, man, yeah. I want that. How do I get some of that? <laughs> So yeah, I, I guess like spinning it back to you, like what are some things that you love about your partner? You know, like what would you say? And you don't have to cry or anything in front of it, but <laughs> but if you were to like step into, you know, your heart and just speak yeah. honestly. The things, that, first of all, you know, the story's in the book, but I will say that uh, I was always attracted to redheads. And, uh, and, <laughs> and, uh, and the short version is I, I pointed from across a crowded room and I said, I, I want to meet that redhead over there. And you have to read the book. To, and I did. And we got married shortly after that. So, so mm-hmm. that, that's interesting. But I actually, um, um, she, she, she was the first person that I was able to share some very personal things with that I didn't ever share with others. In fact, you know how you have that conversation where, you know, where hey, we need to talk. So I remember my wife's name is Lori. And so it was about two months into the relationship and I, I, I wanted to uh, let her know, she didn't know this. So she, you know, she was very nervous and anxious and this talk thing, she thought I was gonna break up with her, but I really had a financial uh-huh. issue. And I just wanted her to know that I had um, a significant financial issue. And I thought, cause I, in my mind, this is moving along. We got to mm-hmm. reveal some stuff. And I actually had some other things that I wanted to talk to her about. She was so relieved. <laughs> she goes, that's it. She goes, I just <laughs> thought you were gonna break up with me. Everybody has Aww. this two month thing. It's like, anyway, so, so, <laughs> But um, so th- that was a, I, I was able to talk to her about two things that mattered to me very personally that, that, that and she, her response was, was um, trusting and loving and caring. So that was really important. But the thing is, we, um, you know, like all couples and family situations, the thing that I try to hold on to the most is not, not all the little things that get in our way where, you know, people have disagreements or whatnot, and is that there were three occasions that were really traumatic for our family since we've been married. And at all three of those occasions, we were together on the same page and we stepped up big time to, to support each other and to make decisions together, sometimes that even didn't make sense to others. And we were, we were just, so I always had to go back to you know, in, you know, sometimes life is a grind. You know, we've got three kids and they're, they're all, because of COVID, they're all, they're all living here again. We're just going <laughs> pretty well. But it's like, f- forget all those little day-to-day things that, that too, too many of us start to focus on and think is the big part of life. When really, when, 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 when life is really challenging, you know, we're there for each other in big, big, big ways. And so, um, and we, we, we actually um, try to, t- we try to let our kids know that because mm-hmm. I remember distinctly them. They, 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 they. My wife had. A, she's very, very wise. She's really wise with advice. <laughs> my, my kids, like uh, they saw us. You know, they were. We were bickering about something, and they kind of expressed frustration. And then my wife immediately said, "You know, what you don't see is what happens as we resolve it privately mm-hmm. ourselves. You know, a short time later." So you're seeing the public, yeah, we're, we're, we're ourselves. We're in the living room, we're in the kitchen, the dining room, whatever, things are happening. And then she's like, no, you don't, what you don't see is behind closed doors, how we resolve it. And mm-hmm. that's like really important. Those kinds of, so there are building blocks, foundational things that I really value. And I try to focus and remember those and mm-hmm. not get caught up in the little things that bug me or the, 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 that bug us about each other. <laughs> You know, yeah. it's easy to get caught up in like what annoys you. I mean, if, if you were to live with anybody oh, yeah. for 24 seven for years, <laughs> there's going to be some, there's going to be some challenging times. Oh yeah. Yeah. With any, with anyone for that amount of right, time. Right. Yeah. So um, I think how we respond in the big moments, the most important moments, it really says a lot about uh, mm. who my wife is and how, mm. who we are together. 
Yeah, it kind of reminds me like with with my my wife, like she's definitely been there when I was like lost and depressed and going to therapy and like didn't know like I was job switching every six months. Like I didn't know what I was doing. E and I hopping. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like she's definitely been there when when I was just clueless. I was like, I don't know like, what what I want to do. I don't know my purpose in life. Like I guess like a quarter life crisis, I would say. And I will always remember that. Because... Quarter life crisis. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I you know that sounds like the title of a book. <laughs> can, can I get credit for that? Would Would you contribute like your quarter life crisis? I'd it? have to remember like what a, what it was and that to be in that generation. But anyway, yes, but, I'll contribute. But so so I like I randomly moved to Connecticut and Trumbull, Connecticut, out of nowhere, like from Jersey. Like I was just going through like a lot, and she was patient enough with me to, like take the train all the way up to Connecticut all the time and like every weekend and like I'll, I'll never forget that because like you said like yeah especially spending COVID together for the last you know 24 7 like working from home right you kind of kind of get on each other's nerves sometimes but I'll never forget like the times where you know I was like let's just say like doing some shady things with like drugs and like I was I was not in a good place right and she she stuck with me you know she stuck with me when I was like getting fired from jobs. Mm. I was like getting left go left and right. And I was like, not financially respond, like was not doing well with my finances. Right. And I was like moving from place to place and having new roommates. And my roommate was like, not the most in the best place mind frame too. Right. So it was just, but I, I do, I'm grateful for that because I know that like, Hey, if we ever had a bad patch again, like she'll stick with me, you know? That loyalty, you know, I, 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 and, and I don't know how personal we're going to get, but I do remember intentionally, and I don't do this a lot, so, but um, my wife has had some um, on and off, very significant uh, chronic pain, right? And she was, and she was really pretty down about it. Uh, it's it's getting, mm -hmm. getting a little better, but I, I remember twice I was moved when she was in bed and just not feeling well, and. Um, I, I forget the exact words, but I went in there one time I woke her up and I just like kind of grabbed her hand and I said something to the effect, like, I just want you to know I'm never going anywhere. Like mm -hmm. we are in this because, you know, you think about, you know, the, the, the vows and you know, sickness and in health, but sometimes sickness mm -hmm. or illness or like, it could be very, it could become your whole life. Right. Mm -hmm. So that is not what we envision when you're standing up there mm -hmm. joyously reciting vows and everyone's happy and you're drinking and people, you know, are, are mm -hmm. cheering you and whatnot is that, you know, you fast forward, you know, decades down the road, your life is probably not mm -hmm. maybe what you thought it was going to be. And one or the other may be truly, um, um, you know, either hmm. in incapacitated or just really struggling in a very significant way. And, hmm. uh, and I just want to really affirm that I am in this, no matter what, even if you are really, you know, I didn't like in my mind, like I'm thinking if you're unable to get out of bed, whatever it yeah. is that might happen. So um, again, I don't do that a hmm. lot. But I do think, again, though, that kind of affirmation is really important. Yeah, that that's that's beautiful. Um, I I definitely think the times that we felt the most connected was like you said when when she was like sick with the flu or just has a migraine or like she just really can't get out of the bed and she was just so happy that I'm just sitting next to her right whether it like for for it's interesting because the times that I've felt the most connected with her is like when she, like I'm reading a book and she's just like falling asleep, like right next to me or on my lap or whatever, right? Like for me, like those are the most beautiful moments, not, not the highs of the highs when I get promoted and stuff. Cause mm. like, you know, like that feels great, but just doing nothing and just being in each other's company, like for me is, is just beautiful. Right. Cause it's like, no one's expecting anything of me. Like I don't have to prove myself. Like I don't have to raise this amount of money to, to prove mm. that like I'm worthy of, of, you know what I mean, of love and stuff like that, right? So it's that unconditional love is when I feel like the most connected, honestly. That's right. That that's awesome. That that makes sense to me. And I and I'm glad to I'm glad to hear that that's um you know that's what your relationship is like. We are that that whole um sort of financial aspect where you're always making a bunch of little deposits with each other, right? And then eventually someone needs to withdraw a, a lot, but there's 
but there's so much there, there and there's so much trust and grace and love that that mm-hmm. then when that withdrawal needs to happen you're still you're still partners you're still together you know so yeah. you gotta make all those little deposits and all of a sudden you have <laughs> all of a sudden you have you, you're really rich in your uh mm-hmm. in the strength of your relationship yeah yeah it, it, it's I like i never said these things out loud this yeah. is you're, you're, I love the fact you're making you're you're making me in a really good, healthy, positive way think about the things that I or express things in a way that I haven't before. You're yeah. good. You should do a podcast more often. <laughs> you maybe should write some books, Steve. It's not, it's not, <laughs> I would like in the credits or the acknowledgements to acknowledge this idea coming from me to you on January on February twenty third of twenty twenty one. Yeah, and and I love like what you said about like you know we have all these mentors in life and and these men who model these behavior that that affects you right like clearly he's i you know the other pete um in in the book um he's he's been really inspiring for me because he's very honest about saying like hey man like whenever i meet someone new whether it's an 18 year old or 16 year old man man he's like I'm always thinking in the back of my head, like, is he going to like me? Is he going to accept me? Is he going to think I'm cool? Like, am I hip enough with, you know, and he's very honest with it. You know, he's like, I've been doing men's, I've been leading men's workshops for years and years. And every year, I mean, every new workshop, I'm still afraid, like, am I going to be accepted? Like, am I manly enough for this guy? Like, is he going to like my beard? You know, like all these little things. And he's like, I've been doing this work for for what seems like a you know a lot every day right and i'm still questioning like am i am i cool enough to to hang out with these guys right and it's just something that is uh we all go through as men well you know a big part of my story which was was an easier part to write because um I was really in this comparison trap for a long time. And there's reasons for that. You know, I have a twin brother, but there's other things that, mm-hmm. that I was really, I really was into this hard. And so I, and I always felt like I was on the short end of the stick and that was mm-hmm. completely my own, uh, uh, you know, uh, mental um, um, attitude about it. Right. But this is literally, with, literally this, I don't, this is not in the, in the, in the book either, but literally one day on the phone, um, uh, Pete, my, my, my friend Pete, who I read about, he temporarily worked for United for, 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 for me for six months. And we were really, it was actually pretty awesome to be in, you know, in the same office working together every day. But at, at one point I had to call him on the phone. And as I was picking up the phone to call him, literally I heard a voice saying, stop comparing yourself to Peter or anyone else and stop being jealous wow. and envious. And I was instantly, and I haven't been since. This was like wow. eight or nine years ago. So when I, when he answered the phone, I told him that. And he was like, he was so excited, so relieved. I think a little tearful because he wow. could see that what I had done, because I, I really do admire, admire him very much. I did mm-hmm. put him on a pedestal. And I, mm-hmm. and I thought that, um, I needed to be like him when really I need mm-hmm. to find the best version of myself. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I have my own God given talents and abilities and purpose. And so, and mm-hmm. not to compare to other people that has been beyond free. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's a huge part of my life. And I really try to sort of try to um, help others understand that trap, how, how, how um, limiting it can be. And so yeah. that was, just, that, that was just in an instant. And again, if you're a person of faith, you might understand that or might have experienced something similar, but that's been mm. so powerful. I wow. actually now celebrate other people's successes instead of mm-hmm. looking at them or trying to downplay them or you know not acknowledge them or just fake and not acknowledge them or just in my mind compare mm-hmm. myself. And um, it's just freeing, Davidson. It's just huge. I, I think that's a great point. I think once you acknowledge you can celebrate other people's success. Like when you were sharing with me, like how you had so much feedback and so many of your friends have read it and have given, like, you know, giving you positive praise. I think me five years ago would have been like, oh my God, what's wrong with me? Like, how come he, he has so much love? Like, oh man, like, you know, more like that scarcity context, but I was yeah. generally just happy for you. Right. And I was just like, wow, like Appreciate I was that. able to contribute, you know, to this. Right. And I think it's just a, it's such a big shift, right? When we, we stop um, thinking like, oh man, why does that other person have so much more than me? Instead, just being like, wow, like 
that's amazing. Like, you know, and then just being happy for the person. Right. I, th- I think that it takes a big person to generally be happy and we're not perfect. Right. There's, right. there's definitely some days where I'm like, man, I should have got that promotion over as you know, her or him. And, but then once we t- stop and acknowledge, like, you know what, like, I'm pretty happy where I am in life. And I'm, I'm just, you know, fortunate to be alive, to be breathing, to have a, you know, a wife who loves me and start to think about like, you know, what I should be grateful for instead of like, Oh, I don't have X, Y, Z. It's like, it's, it's such a simple practice, but it has really served us well in, in life, it sounds like. I think so. And even just, you know, writing in the, in the book, David's in the chapter, and, I, and I'm really grateful that you put this all together, you and Liz, is that, you know, that's like, that should be enough. And so this is the way I look at it. And it really was the writing process for me kind of went as I expected. And uh, parts of it were easy, parts were challenging, but I really was um, very pleased and and. I got over my anxiety about putting the story out there in public, which I knew I would, but I still had to go through that. But in the end, just the writing of it, even if I got zero feedback, mm. is enough for me. And anything mm. else that people would choose to share with me is bonus. Mm. And that's how I look at it. So, um, and I have been fortunate that people have, um, you know, given me some 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 positive feedback and um, um, have been interested in reading it and learning learning more. And um, so, uh, mm. but. You know what it is? I, I learn a difference. There's what I need and what I, what I, right? The difference between like need and want, mm-hmm. right? So um, I don't, or, or I don't really need the question. Oh, actually, this is a bad example. I I'm, I'm, I'm lost <laughs> my train of thought. I didn't, hmm. Oh, preferences and need. So it's my preference that people are able to express constructively, positively, or, or, or with concerns about what I've written. That's my preference, mm. but I don't need any of it, mm. right? So, it's not, so, so, yeah. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so it doesn't change the value of the words that I wrote. Yeah. How I felt about it. it um, it's, it's awesome, right? It's sort of like, you know, like, like I, you know, I also do like a lot of fundraising for like the Orphans Future Alliance and some other projects that I'm involved with, right? And of Thank course, you. I would That's really awesome. Thank you. Yeah, and I feel like orga- I appreciate that. I'm glad you're. I, I, it's not easy to do fundraising. So, oh Thank yeah, you. I'm sure. I'm sure you know. <laughs> so, so you know, it's like of course I would want like more or people to donate to my you know building schools in Africa and stuff like that, right? Mm. Like that's that's great. So I was very happy that it's like okay, I raised like enough to to be able to to go there, right? And of course, I would want double that, right? So I can support my team and everyone else involved, so I can get more people to to help us as we um, we go. But then I know, like at the end of the day, like okay, I'm a good person, like I'm doing the best I can, and and it doesn't necessarily matter how much I raise. Like I think that's great, but if I'm like strong in my conviction and like, hey, this is a good cause, like I'm I'm doing good work, everything else will take care of itself, right? So I don't necessarily like need the you know, oh, well, I want to raise the most out of everyone out of the mm. team, right? And then for me, like, that's been freeing because I think in the beginning, it was it was like, well, um, you know, I need to, like, I have to, because if I don't, like, I'm a failure, you know? Or, or, or in the beginning, I was like, I need to make up for all the wrongs I've made or all the sins I've committed, right? Mm-hmm. So it was coming from a place of like, oh, well, if I do this, like, I'm a good person versus like, now where I'm like, well, I know I'm a good person, but you know, it's a choice. Like, I think doing this would be nice. Like it, it, it'd be cool to build five schools versus two schools, you know? So I think like it's shifted um, recently, but it wasn't always like that. Right. Like, like in the beginning, it was like making up for lost time. Like, I'm like, oh man, like, you know, in my night when I was 20, when in my twenties, like I was a bad person. So I need to raise mm. a lot of money to make up for that. <laughs> right, right. It doesn't quite work that way. But right. sometimes though, sometimes um, the effort you put in, let's say it's the fundraising, you know, maybe you get a person or two involved and you don't even realize that maybe for a decade, they pick up and get enthusiastic and they start supporting that organization in ways you might not even know that are sort of, um, in, in sort of in, in society's measures are more significant. Maybe they're able to also, maybe you get credit for pulling them into a project you care about and they help build two more schools. So mm-hmm. it's like, what is the impact? And you don't, and so sometimes you know it and see it and sometimes you don't. And, um, but you have your role to play and you, and you do what you can. And the key mm-hmm. is 
like what drives it what is your why why are you doing this and if it's it's yeah. if it's a pure motive about caring for other people and you're know, using your heart um yeah. then it's all good and and yeah. and the success that you achieve is um you have to just look at very positively and, and not look at the measures that other you know you could you, you might have a friend who literally um uh has worked for several companies in a, in a C-suite high level person and can call the corporate relations people and get, you know, three $100,000 donations that like, so mm-hmm. that, but you brought the him, him or her in, like, you know, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Hmm. Yeah. I, I think we don't often think about like the, the, the impact that we have on a, on a lo- much larger scale. I think we think more of like, in um, just the direct impact. Right. But for, like you right. said, Sometimes I don't think about like, oh, you know, I've helped, you know, I've, I've probably helped over a hundred people get jobs at different companies. That's cool. And, wow. But, but I, don't, I don't often think about like, okay, well, what's the impact that they have had in these organizations, That's right? so important, right? What's the impact yeah. of them? And you may or may not ever know it. Yeah. And, and I, I, I think sometimes in this hard driving world, and I know that, you know, I think, are you a coach as well? Or you yeah. Coach? So yeah. Um, I think sometimes people... It's another kind of trap. I don't have a name for it, but um, we don't ever want to aim too small. But I think sometimes we Mm -hmm. aim big and we think that global impact or major obviously identified public impact is what real success is. It literally could be that you interact with one person who is completely different person because of interaction. And that sets upon generations of change and that per- so so like, so and it's all the same value to me. And so we, I, it, so we, if you if 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 you are a person who has the potential to make dramatic, you know, global or regional or significant change that touches lots mm-hmm. of people, go ahead. But that's not like if if you're not able to do that or that, but but don't discount or dis or devalue yeah. what you are able to do and maybe it's even just in your own family what decisions you make or how you treat people or whatever the whole thing about yeah. breaking the cycle of abuse mm-hmm. all of a sudden affects all of your generations behind you so like yeah. and that's that could be i think that's a win that's a that's a that's good <laughs> enough like yeah. you may not you know start um you know uh, uh you may not uh, end hunger in somalia <laughs> but if you yeah. you know, all affect positively all those future generations because you've stopped the cycle of abuse that's a huge yeah. win yeah i mean not all of us could be ceos of united ways right <laughs> like i mean that's like next level stuff right I, th- I think it starts with like you said like just being one of your 800 volunteers that you you have <laughs> impacted is is sometimes good enough you know well, it's, 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 yeah, definitely it's been, it's been fun. And I, I get, insp- I get inspired every day by both the, the people that I work with on staff, the volunteers we work with and the people that are served. So it's, it's super awesome. <laughs> so I, I definitely, um, um, there's a lot of joy there and, uh, and, and, but I'm enjoying it even more now because of the perspective change that I've had and the growth that I've had to go through. And, uh, I'm really grateful for what other people speak into my life, you know? And, uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's always a two-way story. I think it's, there's always, I'm always learning. I, I, I sometimes connect with, um, you know, some kids at church who were younger, under 20, or maybe in their early 20s. And I've had a conversation with them or whatnot. There's always something I can learn. Like, it's not just mm-hmm. me pouring into them. And they may not be intentionally pouring into me, but I can learn and learn from them or um, develop uh, and, and grow in a way that um, I might not otherwise have. That's super important. Yeah. That, that's a great mentality because, you know, I, I think sometimes people think wisdom is, is when, you know, older, right? Like the elders, which I think most of the time it is, right? I think that should be right. Right. We should be getting wiser as we go older. That would be <laughs> right. It doesn't mean there's no wisdom at a, that, that a 20 year old has, but they right, right. But, but like, you know, all of us are at different some people like there's i'm sure there's t- some 20 like i have a mentee um in bronx high, um, one of the bronx high schools that i meant it's a four-year mentorship mm. i'm a part of and i learned so much from him yes in terms of just creativity and just speaking his mind and just like he creates a uh, rap and beats and like anything i say like he'll do it i'm like oh yeah you should, you should check out um you know graphic design or whatever and then like i come back and he's creating album art like the next week and i'm like that's so and funny. you know what I mean? Like for us, it's like, it's like a big, it's like for us to do that. It's like, it's like a big change, right? For, for him, like 
I could be like, yeah, you should look into um, this video editing software. And then the next time I speak to him, he's like, I already created five videos. And I'm like, Jesus, you know, it's like, we can always learn from others. You know, I think sometimes the youth have that like boldness that, that we don't have because like, you know, we've been, we've had a lot of failures in maybe like these certain areas. And then for them, it's like, they haven't experienced in that yet for them. Like they're much more bold and they're just like, you know, he released, like he just releases content and mute and songs like all the time. And I'm, I'm just blown away. I'm just like, wow. Like to me, to be able to release the song would take like a month, you know? <laughs> well, you know, I, 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 we do have to, I think, uh, hopefully approach other people is, um, you know, everybody has value. And, um, and, and so if we focus more on the strengths that people have rather than their weaknesses or flaws, and re regardless of the develop, developmental stage they're in, that's very, very positive and, and empowering. And, I, and, maybe, and, I, and I'm kind of naive that way. I see the best in people. Part of that is just me, my nature, part of that strengthened by my faith. But like, I really believe, believe in that. Like, let's look for the good in each other. You can't ignore the bad stuff that is hurtful to you or others. Like, you can't ignore that. But there's a lot of little stuff that isn't necessarily um, very significant that might be a negative or concern. But why not focus on building up the strengths? I'm a, I'm a, I believe in you build up your strengths mm -hmm. and you only worry about your flaws unless they're really hurting you or someone else. You just don't I worry love about that. as much. Yeah, that, that's a really good. Uh, Am I coaching you? <laughs> can I send you a bill? <laughs> you can. I don't know about I'll necessarily pay it on time. But <laughs> um well thank you so much kevin I, I really appreciate our conversation you know i want to acknowledge you for obviously the the meaningful impact and the work that you're doing in the world like just giving back to the communities and um you know i wouldn't i wouldn't be surprised if you know you continue to write a lot more it's it seems like it's something that really drives you and i'm sure there's a lot of other topics that you be that you would want to share with the world um, but yeah, thanks for being on the podcast and thanks for contributing to uh, redefining masculinity, like obviously not do the book only, but do your actions, your, your being, your support, your optimism, and just your vision for the world. Well, you're welcome. It, 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 this was really fun and I'm appreciating getting to know you and, um, you know, just, you are an authentic, vulnerable person. And, and I, I, I continue to need role models. I need, I need that to be modeled consistently with me too. So, um, and uh, I think that that comes, I don't know if it comes natural to you, but it's something that you've learned behavior that you uh, share and impart with others, including me. So I'm grateful. Uh, thanks, Kevin. That means a lot You're to welcome. me. Yeah, the feelings mutual, like when you shared about your, your friend and, 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 you know, how that's affecting you, like it really, it's hard for men to, to acknowledge that, you know, like th that we're suffering, like men are supposed to be this. I think, yes, like there's a time where we need to be strong and, and be that, um, that, that staple and that character where, you know, everything's going to be okay, despite the setbacks. Right. But there's also a side of, you know, the new masculinity, which you're modeling. That's like, Hey, I can generally communicate with my friends like hey you mean a lot to me and 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 you know I'm 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 really sad that you're not at 100% and I'm here for you and you know no matter what like you know I'll, I'll be there for you even though um you know it is challenging to be with you at this time but you know you know that um I'm I'm here no matter what happens right that that's rare i feel like and i think uh, you and i can and and those that uh also wrote chapters and contributed and people who are reading it and i love the fact that women are reading it if we, we we can all learn that lesson right we can all be more open and vulnerable and trusting and supportive of each other when we need to, that's part of the part of the point of writing the book right so yeah. um and reading it and uh, and I, I think you and, and I, we do encourage some of the, the some of the um more interesting and positive reaction i've gotten is from other women mm. which is cool it's yeah a book for all a book for everyone <laughs> you get a book and you get a book and you get a book Oprah. yeah it, it's cool to open up this conversation and it, it, it'd be cool to to kind of reflect five years or 10 years in a line where you know someone reads it and be like hey you know because of your book I was able to share a little bit more openly with my girlfriend yeah. or my wife and and that's the goal right to brother to, dad whatever right yeah yeah whatever. yeah like oh as I, I was able to tell my dad that like hey like you know i, I was kind of sad when you went on that that two week long um business trip to mm -hmm. overseas right like I, you know i definitely missed you like 
it, it it's tough for men to to say stuff like that right and the dad or even the dad saying like hey son like you know i'm doing this for you like i'm i'm, I'm the reason why i'm traveling so much is because I just want the best for you. And I don't want you to uh, suffer or necessarily work as hard as, as I do now. Right. And, and men don't really say that too often. Right. And a lot of much. times it's, it's like, you know, do, you know, other ways. We're going to encourage that. You're, we're going to, we're going to keep encouraging that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank well, you. thank you so much. And uh, yeah, I'm sure this won't be the first time. I'm sure there'll be many more conversations and hopefully many other collaboration projects that we'll have in the future. Good, I hope so.